Beware, today's episode is quite unethical. Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. Now everybody knows that when you need advice on how to live your life, make wise decisions, the best place to turn is your mom. My mom? She is a wise woman. Yeah. That's not what I was thinking. I was thinking Reddit. I thought you would say Reddit because you're a Reddit man. I am a Reddit man. Every night before I go to bed, usually I'll, I'll peruse a little Reddit. You're a, but be a bet it man. <laughs> I'm a bet it man, but I'm really just looking for my mom on there. Well, I think I have your mom's number and I'm, I'm not making that up, so uh, <laughs> I'll share it with you. You're in uh, contact? I mean, occasionally if I need to be. Okay, there is a subreddit called Unethical Life Pro Tips, which is full of people giving tips on how to accomplish something using highly unethical, yet often Ooh. very hilarious tactics. So okay. we're gonna exploit that subreddit to find out who's got the most unethical brain. It's time for, do these good boys know how to be wicked? Maybe after this game, we'll steal your lunch and then lick it. Okay, so we're gonna channel our inner unethicality. It's easy for me to do that. Uh, so Stevie is going to read us basically what is trying to be accomplished in the subreddit, and then we're going to guess what the actual unethical strategy to accomplish that said thing is. Yeah, points are gonna escalate each round. In the end, the loser will get an unethical surprise. Mm -hmm. Don't know what that is. Stevie, uh, cue up the first unethical life tip. Okay, boys, what is the unethical pro tip to get out of responsibility for accidentally hitting a parked car? Hmm, okay. So you were caught hitting the car? No, you, you want to get out of responsibility. You've hit the car, but you haven't accident. fled the scene. But you're trying to not be responsible for it. <clears throat> uh, Just right enough to explain it, I guess. Okay. I, see, I want to be good at this because I want to win, but I want to be a good person, okay. so, which right. means being bad at it. Well, let's see what you say. Um, I said earlier note, meaning um, when no one's looking, it, you have this note ready in your car, and it's a note of apology from somebody else, not you, talking about how badly you hit the car, and you slide it under the windshield, and it's like, dear sir, I hit your car, I had to leave, but Here's my number. I hit it really bad. So if anyone comes after me and also hits the car a little bit and probably doesn't do any damage, it was really me that did the most damage before I split. So call me. That's confusing to me. <laughs> um, I went with something that is unethical and could end up getting you caught, but if you're a good actor, you can do it. You just yell, somebody hit this car, there he goes! And you, you, you point at somebody else leaving and you, so it's sort of the whole like, he who smelt it dealt it kind of situation. Okay, okay. mine's clearly better than yours, but what's According the According to Reddit user Abinus, the answer is save business cards of people you don't like. If you ever hit a parked car accidentally, just write sorry on the back and leave it on the windshield. Okay, well Link definitely wins this one. That isn't what you said. I'm confused but, by links as well, and I and I well, did feel me, like like me, Rhett's answer was can, was valid. But yes, please explain what what you mean. You mean like going back in time? No, I hit your car, but somebody had already hit it in the exact same spot before me. Yeah. Okay. Which is a Got ridiculous thing to say, but it is okay, way closer Rhett, to the real. But life. hold on, you when you hit somebody with your point, car, so. your car is damaged. How about another <laughs> one? Shall we? What is the unethical pro tip to getting away with hitting your boss in the back of the head as hard as you can? Uh, oh, this is easy. Whew. I've actually thought about this before. I've actually seen this one done. You go first. You act like you got hit too. <laughs> it's, it's just like, you, you know, <laughs> you, you hit him on the back of the head and as soon as they turn around, so like, You're like oh, what the, was that a bird? Was that two birds? It must have been a, a flock of birds. Man, did it, how, did it hurt? Was it real hard? Because it was real hard on my head. It's just like, there are no birds. We're in an office. Yeah, that's actually a thing they do on the YouTube. I see this prank quite a bit. Mine is the, the good old pocket wasp. Always be carrying around um, a de-stingered wasp and then what you do is you just haul off and you hit your boss in the back of the head as hard as you can and when he turns around he's like, what the crap, you're fired. And before he says fired, you say, there's a wasp on you. It was about, it was 
It was about to get you, but I killed it. That's Here actually, it is. That's really good. Link, I don't even... You are like almost exactly right in a way that is so confusing to me. It's 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 from Reddit user Silocule. If you glue a dead wasp to your hand, you can hit your boss on the back of the head as hard as you'd like and act like you saved him. <laughs> the pocket wasp, it was a hand I don't wasp. think you need to glue it, you just need to hold it. Oh, you're wow. saying you hit him while it's in your hand. That, I, that was pretty crazy. Yeah, I, yeah. Freaking wasp. The fact that they, they selected wasp instead of bee. I know. That's specific. What is the unethical pro tip to find your phone when it is lost and on mute? Well, I know the ethical way. So, Just with the app, the find your phone you app? You go to find your phone app. Okay. All right. I said, Steal another phone. Now hear me out on this. I'm not just saying because you can't find yours, take someone else's phone. Um, someone else who's around uh, the place where you're pretty sure you lost your phone, take their phone temporarily. Let them realize that they lost their phone and as they look for it, they're not gonna find their phone because it's in your pocket. What they're gonna find is your phone. That's, man. Originally I said hire a sniffer dog but then I said, steal a sniffer dog to make it unethical. So you have a to find dog. a dog that specializes in sniffing phones. I'm sure it's a thing. And then you have to steal that dog, use the dog for your services, and then you can return the dog after he finds the phone. See, or keep the dog. You know, It's more unethical a, if you keep the dog. Okay, this is from Reddit user Hubix, who says, Hubix? Lost your phone and it's on mute? Simply kidnap a child, then stay put wherever you think you left your phone. Eventually, they'll send out an amber alert and your phone will buzz. An amber Whoa. alert. But it, you know, I just said steal another phone. I That's kind of close. A, I said steal another bean. I feel like, again, I think we have to give it to Link because it, it's so, it's so, it's so close his to, is, his you is should really submit good, this, yes. You're commandeering his is someone not better else. Than, it's, it's not close, it's better, but it's not closer no, to the real answer. it is better because. I stole a bean. No, it's better because you're. I'm commandeering someone else's efforts I, to do I mean, so, to, in a how search. are we playing this game, really? What is the unethical pro tip to get away with accidentally clogging a toilet at a party? Okay, I mean, I got something to take care of it for sure. Okay, before we reveal our answers, I do want you to understand and know that you can get this shirt that I'm wearing that says, who the heck are Rhett and Link, which by the way, is the two of us. I think it's an ethical way of finding other mythical beasts out in the wild because they will come up to you and answer the question and you'll be like, I already knew the answer. Right. Let's be friends. Mythical.com, <laughs> mythical.com, there's three dots now. Again, I think I've got something that is definitely unethical, but it's based on the creative distraction Start a fire. Um, if you start a fire in that house, I guarantee you the last thing they're gonna worry about is who clogged the toilet. Okay, I said the old window exit re-entry. What you wanna do is, you You're wanna- You're really good at coming up with ways to get out of trouble. Are, have you been getting yourself out of, the funny thing is, is you get caught doing things unintentionally all the time. You've never employed any of this in real life, but you've had all this in your brain. This is a genius idea. It lets people think I'm human just like them. <laughs> when, I, when I simulate shortcomings. So they, basically it's an unethical strategy. Um, yeah. Your so, life strategy. So what you do is you re-enter and then immediately leave and you're like, oh my gosh, and you go tell them someone else. No, that's what you don't do. No, someone I, else. I think you were. I think you were. You get to come into the party because the person who talks about it first. But you've already been at the party. Yeah, but the person who points it out is obviously the person who did it. I just think you just come back into the party from another place. Yeah, and well, there's no way that you can. Somebody's gonna be knocking on the door that's still like closed, and you're in the party. It's like, weren't you at the party earlier? It's like, yeah, I went outside. Yeah, I took a smoke break. You know me. I'm smoking now. <laughs> <laughs> that's not my answer. My, Which will start I am, a fire. I am gonna take. Rhett's answer for me, because my answer was just come back in, open the door and immediately leave and say, somebody clogged the toilet, it wasn't me. Got because it, got it, okay. Well, Redditor SBTex08 advises, if you clog the toilet at a party, find the host and ask them where the bathroom is. Walk to the bathroom and immediately return to tell them it is clogged. There's no way you clogged it in 15 seconds. That's exactly what my answer was before I changed it to Rhett's. 
I still think it is your answer is is closer. Oh, definitely. Yeah, that that's that's what I was saying. But I'm telling you right but now. But I went out through a window because I'm if you come out you right through the now, door, someone else is going to be standing there. If you do that, they're everyone for the rest of history is going to know that you are the one who did it. If you do this, they're only going to know you're the one who started a fire. <laughs> okay. What is the unethical pro tip for getting your heavily stained dishes, pots, or baking sheets clean? Unethical way of getting stuff off of dirty dishes? Mm -hmm. I actually feel like this is my first good answer. Um, mine sucks, so I, I'll present mine first. I, I don't know, I just think, you take them to a car wash, like they got the power wash wand. I don't know how unethical that is, but that was, that's the best I got. You like lay out all your dishes in like the carport thing and you just let it have it. Um, uh, I just said get your dog to do it. You know, put them on the put them on the ground, put them on the floor in just the kitchen. Just gnawing at the, and let the dog. The dog will clean the plates, and it might be unethical. If I don't think like, that's unethical either. No, because dogs are they don't their stomachs don't sit well with that, and also you, it's like <laughs> free labor, forced labor. Bless, yeah. Bless you. The answer from and then there was Lily is have a dish pot <laughs> slash baking sheet bless you that is clean but still stained with stubborn marks prepare a meal for a friend or neighbor in it and they'll be too embarrassed to give it back dirty they'll figure out how to get it sparkling clean I didn't hear any of that because my brain was shaking inside my prepare skull prepare a meal like give your neighbor a, a casserole in the dish that oh. has like oh. stains on the bottom of it, and then when oh. they finish the casserole, good. they'll be like, that is "Oh, wrong. I gotta get these stains so, off." Bake a casserole so on said, top of a casserole. Treat remnant. your neighbor like a dog. Yeah, you're both like very far away, but yeah. sure, a dog is a uh, being, and right. so is your neighbor. Right. So Rhett, Rhett gets, gets the, the pity point. vote. Oh, thank you. Guys. Okay, it all comes down to this. Man, that was a, that's a good one. Hold on, this is worth six points. Uh. Yeah. Oh, so I can still win. <laughs> yeah. Increasing points for the win. What is the unethical pro tip to get your messy roommate to clean up? Okay. Ready? Three, two, <laughs> go. Uh, I said put everything in their bed. Put everything in their bed. You can't sleep on everything. Like they, so, they, they the, on, put, the only place that you can put things that someone has to deal with them is in their bed. If you just put it all in their room, they'll be like, Ooh, I'm gonna walk over this. You put it in their bed, they have to deal with it. It's, it's aggressive, but it's effective. Uh, my answer is plant poop smears. Not poops, but smears. Is that like a pap smear, but a poop? Yeah, it's gonna be gross, but it's gonna be worth it because it needs to be in pungent, but really hard to find and you just put it in weird places like the underside of his mattress uh, or pillow. You're saying that he'll smell it and then clean it up? Yeah, I, the smell will be so bad he'll have to clean everything up and then uh, in order to find what's not there, just assuming that it's all of his crap. Okay. Redditor Auz says, yep. If you can't get your roommate to clean up, create a fake Tinder profile, match with them, and tell them you're coming over. They'll leave the place absolutely spotless in no time. Man, no, these are so clever. I'm coming over. I would feel wrong if you gave me these points because we're oh. both so far off, but Link had such a good streak. I agree. <laughs> okay, Link wins. Yeah, thank mm. you. All right, Rhett, you get an unethical punishment. Uh-oh. What's that gonna be? Yeah. Sorry, <sighs> there's, there's a wasp on your neck. <laughs> I got it. Was that a, was that a bird? Well, it seemed like a pat on the back. <laughs> it, you know what? It's hard to judge where you're supposed to hit the back of that. So you had a wasp, we had wasp residue. It, not an actual wasp. Molasses. It, it, yeah, molasses. It's, yeah, it's you know, wasp molasses. But All right. That's what's on the inside of every wasp. Mythical dot 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 com. <laughs> Get this shirt and click that bell to subscribe. You know what time it is. Hi, I'm Heather. And I'm Aaron. We're from Carmel, Indiana. And we just got married during a pandemic. And, and it's, it's time, time to spin, spin the wheel, wheel of mythicality. mythicality. It's hard to tell who's talking, <laughs> you know, because they both got masks. Congratulations, on. though. Thanks for getting married, and thanks for wearing a mask. Click the top link to watch us play a weird game of just the tip in Good Mythical More. And to find out where the wheel of mythicality is going to land. For some, it's a genuine question. For you, it's a t shirt available at mythical.com.